All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of the Pokemon Generation 1 playthrough. So now we are done with Viridian Forest. We now have a Bulbasaur, we have a Pikachu, we have a Spearow, and a Butterfree. Meaning any ground type with a rock type attack can wreck our shit. Nonsense, Matt. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you're absolutely right, though, because I'm going to spoil a bit here. Wait, I'll get there when we get to talk about it. We you hear the name Butterfree and the way it's spelled, you, you just, you, I'm just like imagining you're just throwing like giant cartons of butter out. I am the Butter Liberator! <laughs> Now go, now go, my fr my friends! <laughs> Be <laughs> free! <laughs> New butterfree butter. <laughs> I can't believe it's not butterfree. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the gym. This here's where we get our first gym leader slash boss battle. And this kid is a particular asshole because he saw there were a lot of trainers around here just starting their journey with normal types, flying types. Bug types and the occasional Pikachu, so this kid chooses to get the fucking rock type Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's destiny. I just learned how to pick his battles. Smart <laughs> in hindsight, but he's still a dick. Well, maybe that's the, maybe there's a reason why he's only the first gym leader. Hmm. So welcome to Pewter City, ladies and gentlemen. And when it comes to towns in general, I'll be pretty much showing off every house you can visit, all the NPCs you can talk to. Uh, and when it comes to Pokemon Centers, I will show the first visit to it, and then after that I will pretty much be cutting, uh, similar to what Ted did in the Brain Scratch. Well room. done, well thought. Yeah. Uh, what should we call it? Um, Pewter's, Pewter's uh, palette is normally rock gray. Yeah. Go figure. With a, with a, a bit of a, a hint of blue, actually. I see I see more gray than blue. Well, no, no, they're going for gray, yeah. Yeah, but I, I kind of saw a tint of blue, yeah, but yeah. you're right. It's more prominent in the blue version. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Pewter City. Pewter City, yes. One thing I hate about the NPCs in the Pokemon games, unless they're bad guys, they all sound like parts of the instruction manual. <laughs> <laughs> what so, if I don't want to go here? Get your ass in there, boy. He takes off his belt. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the museum. You pay 50 bucks for a ticket. 50 yen. yen Poke dollars. Poke bucks. <laughs> That is the fossil of an Aerodactyl. Yes, Pokemon do die. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the... For those of you who know of the missing note glitch, that's one of the sprites that could show up. Made me shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I never had the missing note show up as a fossil. Go because your name... Uh, you have probably had the certain characters in the right slots when a name. I always had the glitched up L block. But, I had uh, that too as well. I could, I could imagine that if I saw I that. I saw that thing. I, um, I literally... I, I honestly did shit my pants. I was like, whoa, I gotta change it. <laughs> Are you guys aware of the um, creepypastas of um, the um, ghost hand? Of course. The left. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's, why you're, with, that's why you're looking forward to Lavender Town. Honest to goodness, with most creepypastas tend to suck, but if anything, the fan art's really good. Like the ghost one? I like the Hypnos <laughs> Lullaby. The ghost Pokemon creepypasta, yeah, all 57,000. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually lyrics to um, to the um lullaby. Yeah, we'll sing that later. Yeah, what, once the thing comes, uh, once, once, not... once Lavender Town comes up, then we'll sing along to it. We will. Yeah. I, I don't know the lyrics, little fan. You see, right there, I went up at my leisure because I could have sworn that guy stopped you the moment you got in his line of sight. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I was able to step past him. So, I, but I was wondering if I took a step forward, would I be able to pass him? Was that a glitch? I think he gets you like one more block, and then he goes running in front of you. Yeah. Meanwhile, he just ran this way past the logs. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we are at our very first Pokemon gym. You can talk to this guy to get an idea well of how to win. He looks like that kid you would beat the crap out of. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, look, you look like you did a pin slap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wake up slap isn't until Gen 3. I can just like imagine like everyone... And that joke like, off won the freaking battle. I can just like imagine like... um. Since it's called Pewter City, everyone communicates by pewting. No, nope. pewting. <laughs> you know, pew pew pew. pew. <laughs> they have space blasters in the Rock City. Yeah. Uh, junior trainers. These guys will pretty much use like the starting Pokemon or, or whatever. Most not starting Pokemon. Hey, Diglett. They'll use like the calm mons you'll see around the cities, like uh, Spiro, uh, Pidgey, Diglett, Sandshrew, Zubat. Those kind of guys. They're not. Don't look to these guys for anything exotic. Yeah. And any trainers you fight inside the gym will be using the type the gym leader uses, so... No, this guy is using all ground type Pokemon and a rock gym. Well, similar theme, I should say. Yeah. You know, because... I uh, remember this one asshole bitch in Gen uh, 4. 
I was in Byron's Whoa, gym. That guy was really me, asshole bitch. Oh, no, <laughs> no, this one. It was this. It was one of the uh, female train. It was the only female trainer in the gym, I think. Yeah. You're fighting steel type after steel type after steel type. You get the heart. She hits you with an Azumarill. <laughs> <laughs> Sand shrew. <laughs> What did it do, Elliot? I'm imagining Elliot is Sand True in a TV show. Oh, you! Oh, that's Sand True. Oh, it caused another earthquake. Idiot rascal. <laughs> oh, shit. What? No, never mind. <laughs> hey, don't do that. Yeah, dumbass. <laughs> I was talking to the Pokemon tree. <laughs> I, I could backtrack to the Pokemon Center. It is free, by the way. What time are you guys at? You're recording eight minutes? Where? Yeah. Uh, uh, my, uh... <laughs> I was going to bring up a joke, but never mind. It failed. <laughs> You're at eight minutes, right? Uh, yeah, th it doesn't matter, Matt. All right, cool. Everything can be fixed when it comes to editing. All you right. would know that if you knew how to. hoo -yah! <laughs> <laughs> Rock hey. Pokemon prefer high defense over offense until a few later Pokemon will show us otherwise. Gen 2 is that way. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he pointing further into Kano? <laughs> <laughs> now, but, laughably enough, they say that um you can act you have to actually Charmander would be at a disadvantage, but that's really not the case. A lot of none of his Pokemon here know any rock type attacks in no. Gen 1, uh, red, blue, and yellow. His signature attack is Bide, which tells which takes all the damage he takes and then dishes it back out at you. Yeah. So, Onyx, that's it. Onyx, he just has high defense, goes down real easily. Really, the only event disadvantage Charmander has co in comparison to Squirtle and Bubble Sword is that it just takes longer for Charmander to kill him. Yeah, yeah, well, not even that, because well, both Geodude and Onyx have low special defense, so you yeah. can actually burn him, no problem. Yeah. You know, one time I raised an Onyx up, I thought it'd be really great, an awesome Pokemon like that for me. Yeah. And I took it into Pokemon Stadium, and it got duped by one Fire Blast, <laughs> and I was like, well, I just, oh, you're you you, the uh, chosen one! <laughs> 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 Just like that, Johnny defeated Brock. And got a boulder rod. Yeah, generally very easy to do. Uh, well, especially in Bulb uh, Bulbasaur's case, because uh, since Geodude and... Onyx uh, are both on ground rock types. Rock and ground, they're four times weak to grass types. Right. So the Vine Whip is... Absolutely <laughs> clobbers them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but even then, you'll have an equally easy time if you chose Squirtle, because, again, bubble and water gun. Yeah. What should we call it? Um... This is also a gym. This is also a game where the badges increased your stats a little bit. Yeah. Boulder badge did that for defense, I believe. I think. Yeah, I think it says your your defense increases with that. Yeah. Well, it was and GM. you also get the it's right bide. to use HMs with some of them. And this is bide. Bide. And you tossed it. And I tossed it away. <laughs> I don't need this shit. <laughs> yeah. Why, why would you take only some of the energy and then give it back, doubling its its health? Well, the thing is though, is that bide also has a unique. Uh, and that, I'm thinking rage. I'm sorry. Bide's problem is that it's not hard for a trainer to really easily predict it. Yeah. So, in other words, they could easily just cheese you and then not take the damage at all. I'm going to beat you up one turn later. <laughs> yeah, right. Bide also has another glitch. Hold on. If you use Bide and the enemy uses a non-attacking move, it counts as if they used whatever they hit you with last turn for Bide <laughs> damage when you counter. So, basically, you can't avoid... That means you can't always avoid getting countered by Bide. Yeah. Like, you would know that, that offhand, though. Huh. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention. Um, if you, after you beat uh, Gary the second time, sorry, joke off, you beat him the second <laughs> time, and you haven't bought Pokeballs at this point, you can head back to Professor Oak and he'll give you five of them for free. Huh. Hmm. Why doesn't that? he do that when he gives you the Pokedex? We'll never Wait, know. Wait, what did say? Wait, the first time? Mm -hmm. Oh, I always did that. I always talked to him immediately afterwards. I did. I honestly, the very, very, very first time, I just wanted to rub it in his face that I beat his grandson. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me five Pokeballs. So I was like, okay, I'll take the five Pokeballs. Fuck it. <laughs> so Nita ran say bow, bow. Yeah. Bow, wow, wow. Yippee yo, yippee yay. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> now we're on our way to Mount Moon. We have a lot of trainers on the way, so without further let's ado. Let's get, let's start the ass whooping. Booyah. My booyah. eyes are right here. <laughs> they better be that she's underage. Yeah, she's 10 years old. Elliot, oh, 18 year old. <laughs> hey, Sailor Moon's 14 years old. And the, age of, and the age of consent in Japan is actually 14. Congratulations! Here in America, it's 18. <laughs> hey, congratulations. That, that applies in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, a little food for thought. Elliot, it's one of those things where you understand the cultural differences, but when it comes over to American shores, you kind of have to adjust yeah. that anyway. <laughs> it's called localization, dude. 
<laughs> anyway, that was pitch. Lasses are... Remember what I said about the junior trainers? Yeah. Well, Lasses will kind of use the cutesy Pokemon. Pidgey, Nidoran female, Nidoran male, stuff like that. They'll fo whatever Pokemon, or Jigglypuff, Clefairy, whatever looks cute to them, they'll use. Normal types for the main, for the most part. Uh, normal types, yeah, but they're not above using things like Oddishes and Bell Sprouts either. Yeah. Like I said, basically with them, if it can look cute, you got it. So you'll never see a Gyarados on Alas's team unless you played a uh, Pokemon Stadium one. I think Sand Attack may be my my least favorite move in the in early Gen one game. As it shows. Uh, it's uh, I believe what um, Sand Attack can be used. Can be stacked six times. Six times, right? Yeah. So wait, a hundred percent divided by six. Uh, fifteen? Uh, no. We check. Hey, well, it's gonna be a decimal, but it's uh. But the thing is, though, is that that's usually why the meta game usually bans accuracy drop. I think evasion boosting moves and accuracy dropping moves. Yeah. So that way, like, you don't turn the game into a fucking lock. Yeah, but I just I just swear, sand attack fucks with you after the first one. Like, it drops your accuracy by 99% for the first one. That's and bad. And then it resets to 80%. Hey, I mean, where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> and here we go with another bug catcher. What's this kid got? Caterbay. Uh, after surprise. a while, you just want to, like, slug the little shits for not giving you anything with your wall. <laughs> So you're using Spiro? Of course. It's hungry. Anything to make the battles go by as fast as possible, really. You pecked its eye out. One eye, anyway. Christ, Elliot. Now for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> remember, that, remember when Misty was racist against bug types? <laughs> and now it's dead from blood loss. <laughs> Elliot's really looking forward to Lavender Town. <laughs> I'm a sadist. I told you this. He's single, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> they pecked its nose. Got your nose. <laughs> its nose, or if you want to see it another way, it's the mouth of the tooth. Johnny. Oh. Yeah. You imagine that shit? Like, you, you, you just, like, taunt the bug catcher, Spiro flies up with the weedle in the air. Hey, you know, got your nose. <laughs> At this point, I'm switching out Butterfree in and out so we can get to level 12 already and learn confusion. You just want that confusion. I said, it, well, if I if I leveled if I made it a Butterfree from Caterpie, it would at least know tackle. Yeah. Because for some reason, wild Metapod and Cocoonas don't have tackles, but regular Caterpies and Weedles do. There's a well, lot. Of, Weedles have Poison Sting. Caterpie has uh, tackle. There's a lot of weird shit when it comes to Pokemon gaming like that. Like how a Metatite could evolve into a Metacham, and then at level one, Metacham learned um. Fire, Ice, and Thunder Punch. Yeah. Well, even then, like the, the Metapod I caught was at level 5. Oh, of course. Caterpie doesn't become a Metapod until 7. Mm. Like, like I said, there's a lot of weird shit with Pokemon. Yeah. I like shorts. I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Battle time! <laughs> shit! <laughs> what does that have to do with Pokemon? <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> you probably tried to pants them. Hey, you're, hey, look, you're battling Ness. <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, Radita. The youngsters ha are similar to junior trainers, except they'll actually use Pokemon in the sense of they'll actually really try to hurt you. They're more of an offensive kind of fighter. Yeah. So, okay, so Butterfree has the Orb of Confusion. <laughs> <laughs> we just hold it and you come numb. <laughs> no, Butterfree has the Confusion, <laughs> and since Butterfree is part psychic. No, it ain't. It is not? It's bug flying. Bug flying, that's right, I'm thinking. Wait a minute. Is that why? Wait. Ekans, first poison type, and exclusive to the red version. Ekans has a pain in the ass move called Rap, because in the Generation 1, Rap trapped you for two or five turns, allowing you to do fucking nothing! <laughs> hey, if you have you been paralyzed? Have you been poisoned? Have you been burned? You're fucked! Yeah, you're not doing a goddamn thing. <laughs> hey, Ekans is snake backwards. Yep. Arbok is Cobra backwards. And but what Matt means by a uh, what, what red exclusive means you can find wild Ekans in the in, in. Yeah. <laughs> Blue version got Sandshro, a <laughs> ground type Pokemon that innately learned no ground type attacks. <laughs> so if so if so if Ekans is snake backwards and Arbok is Cobra backwards, what about Muck? Yeah, everybody makes that joke. <laughs> I'm just grateful the shiny wasn't white. Does that what uh. <laughs> 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 that doesn't help its case. This bug catcher's got Weedle, Cocoonic, Caterpie, and Metapod. Or, as they like to, we like to say here in America, bird food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, experience points. <laughs> How do you think they named the Pokemon? 
pretty much just pretty much just take the word. Yeah, it's, take it's, like all, it's, all word, it's all word play. Exactly. Take the species, rearrange a word or two, letter or two, and there you go. You know, at first glance at Caterpie, you would think it's a, it was a cater pie. Hmm. <laughs> pie. What's inside a cater pie? <laughs> it's banana cream. What if it's actually a pie made out of a cater? <laughs> cater. <laughs> it is October. <laughs> what, we're, what is it, Sweetie Todd now? We're, we're, we're going to Mrs. Lovett's meat pies? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Lovett's meat pies. Mrs. Lovett's meat pies. Metapod, use Harden. If you know what I mean. Everybody knows what they mean. Uh, especially, after tackle and, especially after tackle and string shot and confusion. Oh, oh. Jesus. <laughs> way to make a double... Yeah, I didn't hear that one. Way to make a double entendre with Pokemon moves. Really, everybody's yeah, done that. Everybody does it, Elliot. You're but, like but, wait, the but six in a, million But in a sentence. In a sentence. Everybody, everybody does it in a sentence. Matter. You're like the six million person to make the Harden joke. Well, with a muck joke. I right, girl, when I peek at you, you make my wiggly tough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl, let me peek at you. <laughs> I'll leave it as a pure Espanol. Yeah. <laughs> Thunder Wave is outright paralysis. Beautiful. It doesn't work on ground or it doesn't work on ground type Pokemon. But that's its only drawback until Gen Six, in which case it's not going to work on any electric types. Wait, what, what, I thought that was just static. It's just Thunder Wave in general. Paralysis. It's paralysis in general. Electrostatics can no longer be paralyzed. Cannot, cannot be paralyzed anymore. I believe so, yes. Okay. I'll have to double check that, but I'm positive. At the time of this recording. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is uh, September 30th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about a week and a half before Pokemon X and Y come out. I can't wait. I will admit, I'm being a little skeptical. I mean, I like what they're introducing, but after the... It's more like... Black 2 and White 2 did so much right. Yeah. Gen 6 got a lot to live up to. I right, completely agree. So wait, why is it that Nita ran in... in um? The other one had had the um genders. Yeah. Well, at the time they weren't thinking about Pokemon genders when they were originally localizing or creating the game. Yeah. So Nidoran and Nidoran female were the only ones that were chanting it. And needless to say, it it was something that they they saw that they gave Nidoran genders and thought, why not every other Pokemon? Yeah. This actually bit the localization team in the ass. One of the goons from Something Awful was a former uh translator for the uh, earlier games, and they said. When it came to the psychic Pokemon Mr. Mime, they're like, we can't call this thing Mr. Mime because what about genders? They weren't really thinking about Gen 2, yeah. but apparently this thing made embarrassing amounts of money, so they thought, fuck it, now we got genders. And so Mr. Mime is now forever an anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's uh, its name is something that's not, uh, it doesn't have a gender to it in the, its Japanese name. Apparently. Right, but here it did. And yeah, here it say, did, yeah. I, Gen I, 2 came around when we introduced genders for everything. Sabrina's Mrs. Mime kind of fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Transgender Mime. No, you, you can say Mrs. Mime, actually. Because it has an MR in, con in conjunction with the S. It can go both ways. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a Mr. Mime breed with a lot of other Pokemon. It goes every way. <laughs> Male, female, whales, birds. Come on. By the way, that trainer had a spear. Really high level at this point in the game. You can fry it. <laughs> That's Spiro. <Kill> you know <laughs> what? <laughs> this is like the same sprite we've seen. I like to imagine and with the with that embarrassing amount of like pit stain under it. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, if you like scroll back a bit, it has like a huge pit stain. I like to imagine that he went home, got new Pokemon, came back and said, "Wait, <gasps> fight me again." <laughs> Where's your deodorant? Deodorant. <laughs> I use Old Spice. Or shit, I use Old Spice and I don't smell. <laughs> the fuck that. You secret. Bye, man. <laughs> Get real sick of your shit, bug catcher. <laughs> Get sick of that Metapod's hearten. Ah, your bird loves it just fine. <laughs> wow, that, uh, let's try that again. Johnny Spiro has no problem with the bird using Harden. Yeah. <laughs> the bird, the bug. I could walk around her. Yeah, there's, I think there's, Jigg there's Jigglypuff in this grass and close to Mount Moon. Yeah, she's the one that has Jigglypuff. Did you touch me? No. You touched me. Jigglypuff has a lot of HP and no real defenses. Jesus. But its offenses is pretty good, though. In other words, Jigglypuff's the more phys I think Jigglypuff. I think Jigglypuff's the more offensive of the two fairies compared to Clefable, which is a bit more defensive. I believe uh, Clefairy is the more defensive oriented. You're right. Yeah, but Jiggly, but Clefable will use more special attacks, whereas Jigglypuff will use more physical attacks. Yes. Is that the is that a pattern with most normal types? They have a high amount of HP, or is that just Jigglypuff? Clefairy? Jigglypuff in general, normal and types could go almost any way. Like, 
Well, I, I know it's a specialty of Chansey. Like, Chansey's a fucking tank. Chansey's a tank. And, well, Gen 2 Chansey's a tank. Gen 1 Chansey's both a special tank and can dish out the physical uh, special attack punishment. Yeah. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, here's a fun fact. In this game, you have a special attack that's combined into one stat. No, but the thing is, though, is that it's never fully clear whether or not it means they're going to hit hard or they're not going to be able to take the hits well. Because I had a Gen 1 Kangaskhan, couldn't do shit offensively with it, and it couldn't take the special hits well either. So it went down from, a, from an electric type attack. Did it just did it have a really low special in general? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. I'm glad, like, later in Gen 2, starting onwards, they gave it special defense, and I'm like, yes! Yeah. It's another thing, though, is, like, that's why, like, leveling up the likes of Pikachu and the Viridian Force is really easy, because Thundershock is not a physical move, it's special. Right. Uh, which means it can bypass Metapod and Kakuna's Harden. I think in Gen 1, in, up until Gen 4, many times... Gen 4 was the one that introduced the special, uh, the physical the special, special split. Right, what I said was that, I think <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> I think in Gen 1 and Gen 2... Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3, the move type itself would determine whether or not it was physical or special. Like, poison was physical, electric was special, ice was special, fire special, water special, grass was special, psychic special, dragon special, and I'm, sh and I'm thinking, and I think ghost was all, no, ghost was physical. Seven special type attacks, the rest of them were all physical. Yeah. However, that doesn't apply to the fighting type move counter, which only counters physical attacks, I mean, fighting type attacks and normal type attacks. But laughably enough, counter also c connected with one hit kill moves. So if it hit you with one hit kill move, you'd use counter, take it out with it like <laughs> Destiny Bond. And we just talked to the shady dealer inside the Pokemon Center, and we, he just sold us a magic card for 500 Pokebucks. And Johnny's gonna give it the most metal fucking name it deserves <laughs> Skull <laughs> Crack. Skull Crack. No, no, he doesn't have two L's. Skull. Yeah. Skull Crack. Skull Crack. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was enough character names for the full name, but, uh... No. You know what? For Alligator... For Alligator doesn't have the, uh, O in its name, but it is for Alligator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a given. Exactly. So when it says you can store your Pokemon via PC, it makes it sound like that you can just take the Pokemon and, like, shove it inside the hard drive. <laughs> That's... Like, like, you, like, you, 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 put, you put your Magikarp in the... Where the, where the fan is, and, like, you keep on, like, shoving it in. I like, like to imagine a Pokemon get a virus, so you have to install an antivirus cleaner. <laughs> You know, Gen 3, they actually showed the TMs as discs, which makes it really feel weird that, you know, you put it on its head and it downloads the data on, into your Pokemon. Yeah. Which really makes you wonder whether or not the Pokemon are living beings in, as the games are pr proclaiming that they are, or if they are just indeed data. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, but for next week, part three, we are going into Mount Moon. We'll see you guys then. Hopefully, hopefully everybody there will have the decency to wear pants. So do we get, <laughs> do we get to go on the mountain on the moon? No. Fuck.